An emergency descent is a maneuver that a pilot can use to lose altitude as quickly as possible. Emergency descents are used for multiple reasons, such as fires, cabin depressurization, or if a passenger or crew member is feeling ill. Since emergencies occur suddenly and unexpectedly, pilots must practice emergency descents regularly to keep the procedure proficient in case it needs to be performed. To conduct an emergency descent, first, the pilot conducts the before maneuver checklist and ensures that the maneuver starts at an altitude that allows a recovery no lower than 1500 feet AGL. Then, they simultaneously reduce throttle to idle and roll the aircraft 45 degrees toward a reference point to the left or right, approximately off of the wingtip. If simulating engine fire in flight, the pilot verbally explains they will pull the mixture to cut off to stop the engine from running, pull the fuel shutoff valve out to stop fuel flow, turn off the fuel pump if it is on, Turn the battery and alternator master switches off to prevent any sparking that could reignite the fire. And close cabin heat and cabin air control to keep minimum smoke in the cockpit. As the aircraft's bank increases, the pilot allows the nose to drop roughly 5 degrees below the horizon pitch as an initial reference and maintains a positive load factor. If done correctly, there should be no feeling of floating or lightness in the seat. Next, the pilot rolls out towards their chosen reference point, keeping the nose low to establish and maintain 100 knots indicated airspeed. This airspeed is used to help blow out the fire. If necessary, the pilot performs shallow S-turns to scan for traffic ahead of and below the aircraft while heading towards their chosen point. Here is how you recover from an emergency descent. If simulating an engine fire, when the simulated fire is extinguished by the instructor or designated pilot examiner verbally announcing it, or as the aircraft's altitude approaches 1500 feet AGL, the pilot begins a smooth level off for landing procedures. They hold their present altitude and allow airspeed to bleed off to the best glide speed of 68 knots indicated airspeed. The pilot should use trim to help maintain 68 knots. Then execute a forced landing and complete the emergency approach and landing checklist, or the engine failure and cruise flight checklist. If not simulating a fire but instead descending to a specified altitude, at approximately 100 to 200 feet above the specified altitude, the pilot begins a smooth level off to maintain the altitude. Then add power to maintain normal cruise speed, approximately 2300 RPMs, or a power setting as specified. Some helpful tips for conducting emergency descents are When handling emergency situations, pilots should first aviate, then navigate, and finally run checklists and communicate. Pilots should always aviate first, which means they remain in control of the airplane. Once that is accomplished, they then navigate, which usually involves navigating towards a safe area to land or away from hazards. Finally, if the pilot has aviated and navigated, they should troubleshoot using checklists and communicate to air traffic control about the emergency at hand. Another helpful acronym pilots use to ensure they are properly handling an emergency situation is ABC. A stands for airspeed, in this case above 100 knots. B stands for best area to land. And C stands for checklists and communicate with air traffic control. There are two primary scenarios for an emergency descent in a Cessna 172. First, to lose altitude and get beneath a cloud deck. Getting beneath the cloud deck does not necessarily require an immediate landing. Second, an in-flight fire. A fire in flight does imply the need to plan for an immediate landing. The pilot must confirm the need for the simulated emergency descent and conduct the proper recovery. The Airman Certification Standards for Emergency Descents are as follows. Establish appropriate configuration and descent airspeed, using a bank angle between 40 and 45 degrees to maintain a positive load factor throughout the maneuver, and maintain an airspeed of plus 0 or minus 10 knots, and leveling off at a specified altitude plus or minus 100 feet for both private pilot and commercial applicants. Note. Private and commercial airman certification standards do not specifically require the applicant to perform an emergency descent to a forced landing. However, applicants should be prepared to continue from an emergency descent to the emergency approach and landing. 
If the instructor or designated pilot examiner wishes to combine these maneuvers, the initial starting altitude should be high enough to allow time to transition from one to the other. If simulating a descent for a specified altitude, recovery should be no lower than 1500 feet AGL. If simulating an off-airport landing, simulated fire should be out prior to the low key point to begin the landing sequence. Simulated off-airport landing should not go below 500 feet AGL. Remember to continuously clear the engine by advancing the throttle to full power for a second or two, and then back to idle during this power-off descent. Be sure to like our video and subscribe for more epic content. And while you're here, check out some of our more recent videos and playlists.